Today, my deliberations is not as of a hedge fund manager. So let me make one thing very clear. Today, my deliberations is as of LLB student, a law student. Guys, when we study law, whether in India or outside India, the process of admissions, the process of qualification may be different. But one thing which is common is the law is of two types. Number one, which is also known as substantive law. Number two, which is also known as procedural law. Substantive law is a law on which you are being framed. While procedural law is a law on which the way out of that frame is being considered. So strictly speaking, in Indian context like IPC, Indian Penal Code is a substantive law. Which means you are framed in this law as far as the criminal procedures are concerned. Civil procedures are separate. While the procedural law is CRPC, which is also known as Criminal Procedures Code, and Indian Evidence Act. If you're a law student, probably you are doing law from any university, it hardly makes any difference. As a law student, it is your utmost duty to learn both side by side. Please don't do a mistake that you first thinking that let me study the procedural law in detail and then I would be studying the substantive law. So example, strictly speaking, in Indian parlance, I would be first studying the CRPC criminal procedure and then I would be studying the IPC. No. This is a grave mistake. The reason being the concept of interconnectivity. How you would be connect interconnective or interconnecting CRPC with IPC won't be happen in an efficient manner. And one thing which is known as subconnectivity. Example. Let me explain my wordings with the help of example. In India, there is a sense of fear and that fear is called FIR. It is called First Information Report. It is categorically defined in section 173. There are eight parts of 173. To me, three are important. 173.3, 173.6 and 173.8. By the way, 173.8 is also known as supplementary charge sheet. You might have heard in the newspapers that CBI filed or Enforcement Directorate filed supplementary charge sheet in the court. Now, this all 173.8. While the key witnesses, the people, those who are key to the case, it is in 173.6. While the filing of the charge sheet is 173.3. So to me, three subsections are very important. Three, six, and eight. Of course, rest are also. But this charge sheet, when the investigating officer, he or she is filing the charge sheet, whether the investigating officer is following or doing his due diligence appropriately or not, you know the ground reality is in India. 
there are ample of cases we have on the Google when investigating officer and police authorities are found implicating the wrong people and leaving the accused. Honorable Supreme Court, Honorable High Courts on time to time basis share their judgments in that regards. But I'm not going to be cover this at least in this video. Now, suppose the first information report is filed against you. People are always scary. They are like, oh my goodness, what the hell it is now? My name is appeared in the first information report. Guys, if I know that people, everyone do not have a very good understanding of the law. But still, we need to understand that Honorable Supreme Court made one thing very clear, very, very apparent, which is called preliminary inquiry. Not every case is subject to preliminary inquiry, but in the Lalita Kumari judgment, Supreme Court made it very clear that preliminary inquiry is must in few cases. And they also put a caveat in that regards. Please study the judgment. Detailed video is live on the YouTube. To counter your FIR, which is filed in 173.3, probably you may be having some sections in IPC like 498A, 406, 323, 306, 506, probably 302, maybe 354. There are various, you know, we have in Indian Penal Court. How can we counter this? We can counter this once we are completely aware about the procedural law. And as far as the criminal is concerned, this is CRPC. And as far as civil is concerned, this is CPC, Code of Civil Procedures. But, like I said, there is a concept called interlinking. And that's more important than linking. Which is called the linking of Indian Evidence Act with CRPC and CPC. Unfortunately, many people are not aware that Indian Evidence Act is linked with both CRPC and CPC. And Indian Evidence Act is one of the basic founding stone of procedural law in India. But unfortunately, if you open the YouTube, you will really found people speaking in the favor of Indian Evidence Act. They will, you will really found people who love linking Indian Evidence Act with CRPC and in, in sync with IPC. But Please do remember that as a law student, you need to understand that. Because guys, the first information report is okay. It's a scary thing. I agree to an extent that your name appeared in the first information report, but investigating officer cannot bypass CRPC and he cannot bypass the Indian Evidence Act. If he or she trying to bypass either, then here comes your knowledge. Here comes your skills that how you can link 173, which means the filing of the charge sheet with this. Honorable courts on time to time basis express their opinions, their thoughts, their citations on the incomplete charge sheet. You can easily refer Google. We are very fortunate that we are living in a times when Honorable Supreme Court, Constitution Bench, live hearings are coming on YouTube. Many high courts, live hearing is coming on YouTube. You can easily download them, read them, study them, watch them, make their notes and see how the high courts are working. 
how to put up an argument, what what are the important things judges considered, and so on and so forth. So, guys, as a law student, please understand that procedural law is as important as the substantive law. So please don't live in a dilemma that substantive law is the only important thing while procedural law is not important or we can handle later. No. Procedural law is also very important. Substantive law. Substantive law is nothing. It's a final frame. That's it. You know, example 306, which is called abetment of society. It's a it's a final frame. You are booked under 306, but the procedure of 306 moves from CRPC, criminal procedures. And Indian Evidence Act come into the picture immediately. Provided you know. Like I said in my earlier videos that law is a very interesting concept. Provided you have to work hard for that. Like finance. Like finance, law is linked with each other. Each and every section of the law is linked with each other. Provided you need to learn that, you need to understand that, and you need to see how you can see the deep linking. That's very important. This is what I can see. We shot thousands of videos in finance. Still, God willing, we are uploading the finance videos. And we would continue to upload the finance videos. And now we are in law. We are uploading the law videos. Thank you very much. This is Rahul Magan from Treshi Consulting Group. You knew my personal number. Plus nine one. Nine eight double nine two four two nine seven eight. Let me repeat plus nine one nine eight double nine two four two nine seven eight. Alternatively, you can visit our fixed income platform www.fixedincome.global. Let me repeat www.fixedincome.global. Thank you very much.